What was the title of this video again? <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the ER Forum. So in today's video, we have more nursing school stories for you guys. I'm going to discuss the first time I was a part of a team that actually brought somebody back to life. Welcome to the episode. So welcome to my room Different background for you guys been doing videos in the garage, but it's still very cold and there's people in the garage right now So I decided to bring the video up to my room, but uh, like this video is titled I wanted to share with you guys some more nursing school stories or nursing stories period And actually I wanted to go further into detail about the first time I was a part of the team that actually brought somebody back to life Okay, so we're gonna have to take this back all the way to 2016 so first semester of nursing school for me was spring of 2016, and um, we're on the medical surgical floor. Myself and six other of my class and six other classmates. So there's seven of us, fresh nursing students, on the medical surgical floor at this hospital, and we have a preceptor. Now our preceptor used to be an ER nurse at this specific hospital, so he knows a lot of people, and therefore we're able to see a lot of things. We're able to get access to a lot of things, which was really cool. Um, so. For those of you guys that know, when you're in nursing school, when you're in the hospital, you're usually assigned a nurse. And then whatever patients that nurse has, those become your patients. And so we split up the workload. Uh, we had six students or seven students. So each student had a nurse. Some of us teamed up and had one nurse that we shared. And um, for those of you that don't know how hospitals are set up, at least here in Nevada, the nurses stations are in the middle. And the floor sort of wraps around the nurses station. So there's rooms on this side and there's rooms on this side. I remember being at my desk charting, or, or I wasn't charting at this point, it's first semester, but I was trying to learn the computer system, which is uh, that hospital's charting system. I was trying to get familiar with it. And I remember hearing a scream out of my right ear uh, saying, oh my gosh. That's the first thing I remember about this situation is that I heard a scream saying, oh my gosh, which came from my right ear. So it was on this side of the hallway. Well, most of my patients were on this side of the hallway. So the nurse that screamed was actually uh, one of the nurses that my classmate was assigned to. Actually, there was two classmates that were assigned to this specific nurse. And so I hear the scream, oh my gosh, obviously everyone kind of perkers up. The two students that had that nurse rolled to that side because this is where their patients are. And I follow behind them. Once I go into the room, I see there's a patient that is half on the floor and half on the bed. Now, I'm not sure how the patient got into this position, but I'm assuming they fell. It's kind of difficult to find how this patient actually got in that position. We were talking about it afterwards. But nonetheless, the patient was half on the bed and half on the floor. I got in there and I seen the nurse grab the, this patient's hand, flip them over, and now this patient is completely flat on the floor and she begins doing chest compressions. Um, at that point, I don't know how much time passed, but I remember looking behind me and I see the rest of my classmates in the room. I see my preceptor trying to shove his way through and um, there's a lot more people entering into the room. So I don't remember hearing a code call. Um, I think the nurse might've hit it when she, when she screamed and I didn't hear or maybe my adrenaline was going, but I don't remember anyone ever going for help because I know I didn't. And so all I remember is there was a lot of people there. The med surge nurses were there, the ICU charge nurse, or sorry, the med surge charge nurse was there, was there at this time. And so now the room is beginning to get filled and um, they're still doing chest compressions, they're still doing chest compressions, some time passes. And then I start to see what now I know were ICU nurses and ER nurses entering into the room. And they weren't standing in the back, they came straight to the front of the room and were asking a lot of questions, okay? The next person I seen come through the room was the ER doctor. Now this is kind of cool because the same ER doctor that I seen, what was this, almost four years ago, the same ER doctor that I seen nearly four years ago is actually one of the ER doctors that I work with now. So that was my first time ever seeing this person and then I end up seeing them once I get the job in the ER uh, two years later. And so that was the first time I was exposed to all of these people being in the room at the same time. So at this point in time, the room is completely packed. And um, like I said, my preceptor was an ER nurse at this facility. So when ER nurses come up to a code, they bring what is known as an IO box. This IO box allows us to gain intraosseous access uh, if we don't have any sort of peripheral access in terms of IVs. And so I don't know what happened with this patient's IV. I don't know if it was blown. I don't know if this person ripped it out on 
ripped it. I don't know if the IV was ripped out upon them falling onto the floor like that. Either way, we didn't have any access. So my professor drills into the patient's, I believe it's their left knee. I believe the left knee was the one we drilled into. And chest compressions are still going on at this time. We're doing we're, we're doing the whole code thing. We're running the code on the med service floor. We end up getting pulses back. And so we flip the patient on to their side. We roll them onto a backboard. We lift them and we place them back into their bed. Now we're heading off to the ICU. Um, obviously, we're on the medical surgical floor, but our preceptor is really cool. And he said, hey, listen, let's go ahead and go down to the ICU and see that transition of care. And so... We went ahead, went down with the patient into the ICU. We enter into the ICU room, the patient codes again. And so now we're coding the patient in the ICU. There's a lot more people there and um, they're doing chest compressions. Now, when you're a student, one of the things you can do is help with chest compressions. Now, a lot of you guys might not have done chest compressions. And if you have done chest compressions, you know what I'm talking about. It is extremely exhausting. Okay, two minutes of CPR, it's it's extreme cardio. And I thought I was in shape prior to doing chest compressions. Once I did chest compressions, I was like, man, I am not as in great a shape as I thought I was. And so we sort of got into a line where we took turns doing chest compressions. And so I was the second one to begin chest compressions. The first one was my classmate who I did work with in the ER. He has now moved uh, and now works in California, but he was the first one to start chest compressions, I believe. Uh, so he went, he did his two minutes of chest compressions and a lot of you guys that follow my videos from the very beginning remember that I still had my stethoscope around my neck at this point. I remember telling this story maybe two years ago. So once it's my turn, I start doing chest compressions and my stethoscope's flying and hitting me in the face and stuff. And you know, just a week prior to that, I believe my professor had told me to not wear my stethoscope around my neck for one, that reason. And for two, people can choke you out with it. All these other things that they told me not to do it for, but I didn't listen. Anyways, it was really embarrassing because I'm doing chest compressions and my stethoscope is hitting me in the face and I can feel my professor reach over and grab the stethoscope off my neck and give it to somebody else. And I felt really embarrassed because I was like, man, you know, I'm doing chest compressions. And I'm saying, you know, this guy told me not to wear that around my neck and here I am making a mistake on a really important time. And so anyway, I'm doing chest compressions on this patient and again, I'm super exhausted. I started to get winded at about a minute and a half. So I had 30 seconds left. And my professor is talking to my ear, he's saying, Kenny, okay, you can do it, you got 30 more seconds, come on, give me two full minutes and we'll switch, give me two full minutes and we'll switch. And I remember him saying that. And um, as I'm doing chest compressions, I can feel ribs breaking, I can hear a lot of popping. It's a very weird feeling. And um, you know, that was the first time I've ever been exposed to something like that. I was an explorer with the police department and you know, I've seen a lot of trauma, I've seen a lot of death through the police department, but it's totally different being in the hospital and actually having your hand on people and being the ones that are working with this patient in order to bring them back to life. And so I remember the patient went into multiple rounds of PEA, PEA. They eventually got pulses back. I remember we gave a lot of epinephrine, we gave a lot of bicarb, we gave a lot of amiodarone and um, we end up getting pulses back nonetheless. Once that code was finished, the patient is technically alive at this point. The patient was subsequently intubated. We went back up to the eighth floor. Now, this was at the latter part of the day. And so the ship is pretty much over for us. So we went into post-conference. We talked about the situation that had happened. Everyone kind of expressed how they felt about it and things like that. Well, just a week later, we were at the same hospital and our professor comes up to us and says, hey, listen, that patient you guys are doing chest compressions on, they're alive still in the ICU and they're actually awake and talking. This blew my mind. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been exposed to this, but to see someone that dead and a week later, they're talking to you. I mean, it's totally weird. I was freaked out. I was absolutely freaked out. We went down to see the patient and man, I mean, you can tell we had broken a lot of things because the patient's sclera was completely yellow as if we lacerated her liver but the patient was alive and so it was probably one of the best feelings that i've ever had till this day was being able to see someone that low and now they're so alive and they're talking and they're thanking myself and the rest of my classmates and they're crying and you know their family is saying thank you so much for 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 helping and and, and doing the things that you guys did and so that was the first time that i was ever actually a part of the team that brought somebody back and it was like the most amazing feeling in the world and that really solidified the reason as to why I went into this career field. I mean, after that day, once I, you know, went home, I thought about it and I said, man, this is absolutely amazing. We just totally 
have this patient on this end of life and now they're completely on this end of life sitting in a chair talking to their family member and just a week ago they were completely dead and so that's a really really great feeling and uh, you know it's one of the reasons why i went into this career field so that's the story i have for you guys in regards to the first time that i was ever a part of the team to bring somebody back i really hope you guys are enjoying these nursing school nursing stories and um, if you are go ahead and like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow me on instagram if you want to see what i'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis so really hope you guys enjoyed the video i will see you in the next one